my name is Alyssa Price, and this is my presentation for um, the genetic disorder. And my um, genetic disorder is X-linked adrenoleukodystrophy. So a brief introduction, X-linked adrenoleukodystrophy, X-ALD, is going to be a genetic disease that specifically targets the nervous system and the adrenal glands. So there's actually going to be three main types of X-ALD, um, the cerebral childhood form, the um, adrenomyelinoneuropathy, which is abbreviated AMN, and adrenal insufficiency only, which is also known as Addison's disease. Now, X-linked um, adrenal leukodystrophy, I'll hear by ref be referring to as XALD, um, it's going to be found in um, most commonly in males, but it does occur in females. It's seen in every kind of one out of every 20,000 to 50,000 individuals. And it occurs in most all populations. There's not a specific um, nationality or ethnic group where it is more common. So specifically, before we get into XALD, we need to know these um, anatomical uh, structures. So because this affects the nervous system and adrenal glands, I'm going to talk about the nervous system. So we know the central nervous system is made up of the brain and spinal cord. And these um, brain and spinal cord will be kind of transmitting out via um, nerves, which are made up of a collection of neurons. So the neuron is going to be the basic unit of the nerve cell. So as we know, electrical signals will travel down the neuron and transmit the message out. So if we look at this image, we can see we have our cell body and our axon of our neuron. But what is important for XALD is this myelin sheath, so this pinkish red around it. And this myelin sheath is going to insulate the neuron and the nerve. Um, and it's also going to increase the speed at which the electrical signal is going to travel down the axon. So the electrical signal is able to travel and kind of jump from node of Rambier to node of Rambier, um, transmitting that signal faster. So obviously a deterioration in that myelin sheath, uh, sheath would be negative. Sorry for the stutter there. Next is the adrenal glands. So the adrenal glands are part of the endocrine system. They're going to sit um, on top, so kind of just superior to the kidneys. And they have quite a few functions. The main one is going to be to produce hormones. So they produce hormones such as cortisol, um, norepinephrine, epinephrine, aldosterone, um, and a few others. They also are going to regulate the metabolism, regulate the immune system, and regulate blood pressure. Um, they also are responsible for stress responses because they release that norepinephrine, epinephrine, those kind of fight or flight hormones, as well as cortisol, which we kind of know as a stress hormone. So the mechanism disease, kind of specifically going one by one through the three main types, but that childhood cerebral form, which obviously is going to um, affect children more than adults, is going to be mostly the effect of the nerve system. So we're going to have a demyelination of the nerves within both the brain and spinal cord. Um, the second type, the AMN, we're going to see both the neurological and the adrenal. So we're going to have the demyelination of those nerves again, but we're also going to have adrenocortical insufficiency, which basically means we're going to have an insufficiency of particular hormones. And when we have that insufficiency of the hormones, it's going to result in damage to the um, adrenal glands. So the third type, the adrenal insufficiency only, just like its name, is only going to have the adrenocortical insufficiency. It is not going to have the demyelination of the nerves. So looking at the major characteristics of each type, um, starting with that childhood cerebral form, the symptoms are going to be neurological because it's only the demyelination. So we might have attention deficit disorder, behavioral problems, vomiting, dysphagia, deafness, fatigue, ataxia, vision loss, and learning disabilities. It's more common in children because they tend to be noticed um, having problems in school. Um, AMN is going to be both neurological and adrenal issues. So having peripheral neuropathy, muscle spasms, muscle weakness, urinary problems, sexual dysfunction. While the adrenal insufficiency only is only going to have adrenal issues, so decreased appetite, screen, increased skin pigmentation, so dark patches, um, muscle weakness, and vomiting. Now, 90 to 95 percent of those with XALD experience these symptoms, but that is not 100 percent. So, while 90 to 95 is these symptoms in these three groups, there's going to be um, a small percentage outside of that. 
So 5 to 10% of males with XAOD are going to um, experience these specific um, physical symptoms. Um, so not reading off all of them, but kind of having headaches due to like increased intracranial pressure, um, paralysis, and dementia. Um, also, females can have XALD. So 20% of females with XALD will experience muscular weakness and spastic paraparesis. So the molecular causes of XALD, this is all kind of due to the ABCD1 gene. Now, the full name, ATP binding cassette subfamily D member 1. But the normal function of this ABCD1 gene is to produce the adrenal leukodystrophy protein, ALDP. Now, this ALDP protein is going to transport very long chain fatty acids into peroxisomes. And once they're in peroxisomes, they're going to be um, destroyed. So they kind of are responsible for the cellular transport of these molecules, these fatty acids, via the peroxisome. Now, when there's a mutation to the ABCD1 gene, this is when we're going to have that XALD. So there's over 650 mutations that can occur in the ABCD1 gene, and 100% of those mutations will cause XALD. So we'll have no other gene mutations that cause XALD, and no other health conditions beside XALD are caused by the mutated ABCD1 gene. So here's kind of a diagram or flow chart. Um, so we'll have that mutated ABCD1 gene resulting in a deficiency of the ALDP protein. This is going to disrupt that transport of the very long chain fatty acids into the peroxisome, therefore they're not being destroyed. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have toxically high levels of the very long chain fatty acids in the body. And when we have those toxic high levels, it's then going to cause damage to the adrenal cortex and the myelin in the nervous system, so resulting in the signs and symptoms of XALD. So if we look at the modes of inheritance, the ABCD1 gene locus is going to be on the X chromosome. So it's sex-linked, so it resides in the X chromosome, hence its name, X-linked. And its mode of inheritance is going to be X-linked recessive. So we can see I have a few different pheno um, genotypes written on the side here. So we can see a normal homozygous female would be two dominant. Carrier would be heterozygous. Um, and then with XALD would be two recessive alleles. So we can see little a, little a. And within males, we have the capital dominant A being normal, um, recessive A being um, with XALD. So here we can see kind of Punnett squares um, breaking all this down. So I'll go through just um, two. So we have a mother with XALD. So we can see she's homozygous recessive with a normal father. And this is going to result with two carrier females, so not phenotypically presenting, and two affected um, males with XALD. Um, versus we can see if we have a um, mother who is homozygous um, for XALD, with a father with XALD, all offspring will be XALD. So here we can see kind of the inheritance pattern um, on a pedigree. So we can see starting with um, Tom here, who's going to be um, have XALD, um, crossing with a um, homozygous dominant uh, mother, and we can see their offspring are going to produce the potential carrier females, and we'll have at least one um, um, once she marries on to some, a person with XALD, we will see that then having the one X from the mother is enough to produce a male offspring with the um, disorder. So we can see how it's going to be inherited. It is recessive and it is X linked. So we're not going to have any parents who do not have the recessive allele producing a child with XALD. So genetic testing, there is genetic testing available for XALD, but it's typically only used to confirm a diagnosis. This is typically diagnosed through um, symptom analysis and as well as blood tests, looking for those very long chain fatty acids in the bloodstream. Um, there's 131 available clinical tests. The cost can range from $100 to over $2,000. Um, I did find one um, website, which I've kind of posted here, the in Invite offers um, XALD genetic testing, I believe, at home for $250. And we're going to have two main types, so molecular genetic testing and biochemical genetic testing. So within molecular genetic testing, it will be mutation scanning of the whole coding region, deletion duplication analysis, sequestration analysis of select exons, target variant analysis, and sequence analysis of the entire coding region.
versus the biochemical testing, analyte, and enzyme assay. Um, genetic testing is not required or mandatory, um, but it is actually on the newborn screening. So many newborn screenings in most states um, screen newborns for XALD. Um, because diagnosing soon results in more immediate treatment, which can prevent long-term issues. Um, I appreciate the time watching my presentation, and thank you so much.